Hello and welcome back to the MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, July 9th. We are working ourselves to the All-Star break. It is getting closer and closer every day. And we got a nice 11-game slate today on both FanDuel and DraftKings. There are some weather concerns. So do make sure you pay attention to weather when it comes closer to lock as a lot of things can change. Weather is just hard to predict now. Before we get into it, I just want to bring your attention to the four promo offers we have right down there. We got Parlay Play, Sleeper, Underdog, Chalkboard, all four. If you are a new customer to them, use our promo code LionStar or the link. Uh, you can get one free month of LionStar as well as some free cash from any of the partners for signing up it is a great deal and it's a good way to try us out uh, for a month see how you like us before you make a decision to you know get this whole yearly pass for 240 a year which is just the best deal there is around now let's get into the slate we're going to start by going over the perfect lineups and the winning lineups on DraftKings and FanDuel then we're going to get into some pitchers to consider and uh, some stacks, just as we do. Now, let's uh, get into it. So Andrew Abbott went absolutely nuts with Chris Sale ending up being pushed to today. Abbott was just super chalk, and he came through, unfortunately. Some of my uh, lesser-owned plays actually had really, really good games. They just got overshadowed by a super chalk putting up 55 and then we got uh texas two-man stack braves two-man stack and some one-offs from there on out ellie de la cruz went nuts uh hines from uh the reds was not on the fan duel slate or else he would have probably been in uh the perfect lineup in some way as well as he had himself a game as well now on to uh, the winning lineup, went to Aaron Costa, 120K. Congrats, you had Andrew Abbott. They had a three-man Cincinnati stack and a four-man Texas stack with Eloy Jimenez doing just enough. And Eloy uh, really did this late in the game with a late surge to uh, help Aaron Costa get it done. So congrats to you. You won 20K, and let's get on over to DK. We had Andrew Abbott and we had Feltner. Feltner is a guy who I really liked yesterday. And the thing that's really interesting about it here is we had Feltner, but we have two Reds guys in the lineup. Uh, most of the Reds did their damage after Feltner left. Feltner only gave up one earned run in seven innings and had like six Ks or something like that. Had a very, very nice game. But Ellie De La Cruz stole a couple bags that just, you know, helps get it done. Hines hit a home run and Cincinnati ended up putting up six runs or something like that. And four of them came in the last two innings. Uh, so Feltner is still making the perfect lineup, even though two reds are in it. Then we have a two man Ranger stack and all one offs from there with a winning lineup on DK going to go dummy CEO. Uh, one by, you know, nine points or so on a five game slate which is kind of surprising they had the chalk john gray who just didn't do it chalk andrew abbott who went nuts and then had uh what is it a three-man minnesota stack and a two-man or three-man cincy stack and then two one-offs in uh Semien and sean murphy uh Solid lineup, way to go. They won. They got nine. Uh, they won by nine, and they won 50K. So congrats to Go Dummy. Let's get into today's slate. Get into the game. All right. Uh, so big thing is we got to watch some uh, weather issues. Twins and White Sox, Royals. And Cardinals are big time worries for possible rain out. I think Colorado and Cincinnati will be fine, but it is one worth watching later as well. This uh, 
St. Louis game and the White Sox game, both of them, it looks like it is going to rain all day long. It is just a matter of fact, uh, a matter of will, are they willing to pay, play a little wet to get it in or are they just going to avoid the whole situation uh, as a whole? In these two situations, I would expect we know, you know, before lock what they're going to do, or at least right around lock. So shouldn't factor too much into our consideration. Just re- just know that uh, the ownership we're talking about here is going to widely change based on what happens here, especially as Bailey Ober is the highest owned uh, pitcher right now at 22% versus the White Sox. He has been in just amazing form lately. 2.97 FIP over his last five with 32% K rate. Now he gets a great spot versus the White Sox. Now, I I got to warn you that, one, there's the weather concerns. We know it's going to be raining. If they try to play wet, uh, there's a high delay chance. So, I mean, you kind of got to just throw Bailey o- over out the window. He's... Right now, he's coming in at high own. Uh, if they play, it's going to be a wet game. Just very high chances of delay. I, I think it's a rough one to really want to go with Bailey Ober in this situation. Now, with that being said, obviously watch what the weather is doing throughout the day. Uh, if he plays and if for some reason the storms back off and it's dry, he's in an absolutely amazing spot. 8,700, 2.3x. I think you got to kind of like that. Next, we got Yusei Kikuchi. All right, so something's got to break here. One, Giants haven't been that great of an offense. However, they've been hitting very well versus lefties. 333 Woba. Uh, Lately, they have a 180 ISO versus lefties and a 385 Woba. And Kikuchi has been poor lately. 5.45 5.45 FIP with a 27% K rate, uh, 6.23 ERA over those last five. Uh, but he's faced the Brewers, the Red Sox, the Guardians, the Yankees, and the Astros. So very hard teams to pitch against. Over the last 20, he has pretty good numbers. 3.75 FIP, 24% K rate. I... I definitely am a little interested in Kikuchi. I'm just very, very surprised to see him being one of the highest owned guys right now. We do have him at 2X, uh, so it's a decent projection. The combined K rate is plenty high enough for consideration at 8.2K. My issue is he hasn't been pitching that great and now is high owned, so... It's a, it's a little bit hard of a pill to swallow when we have, you know, nine or 11 games, depending on how that weather goes, to go with a higher own Kikuchi. But I'm not taking them out of my player pool. If I get a little bit, I'm fine. But I can tell you I'm probably not getting to 20% of him. Next, we got Chris Sale. Same as yesterday. He's in an absolutely – or I mean, he's just been pitching absolutely amazing – you got to consider him in this spot. The one thing you got to bring up is that Arizona has been hitting well. 293, uh, 328 Woba over the last 20 games versus a lefty. So he's absolutely in consideration. But that combined K rate at being like 30% for a 10.4 guy, I, I got to consider him. I think 10.4 is probably a little low for what he should be. The guy has just been a printing press lately. So... I, I'm intrigued and I'm not really backing off just because it's a decent offense he's going against. And speaking of decent, decent offenses, Zach Gallen versus the Braves on the other side of this matchup. I really like Gallen. I know he still working back from injury, went 85 pitches last time versus the Dodgers. I expect him to be pretty much fully stretched out now. Uh, 2.24 FIP over his last five, 3.77 over his last 20, 27% K rate. He doesn't have the upside uh, of sale, but he is way cheaper, and I'm intrigued to go here. He's averaging more fantasy points at home. The Braves haven't been good versus righties. I, I'm super intrigued to go here. They also have a 27% K rate versus righties. So I like the spot. 
his combined carry isn't too much lower than sales and he's 1.5 K cheaper. Sign me up. I like the spot. He's also a little less owned. I'm in it. Uh, next Cal Quintrall. We got a Reds game here. Great American small park. I mean, this is a tough one. Reds hit the ball very hard versus righties. They have a 200 ISO over the last 20 games, but that Woba is low and the K rate is high. So, you could totally go here. Quintrall has shown us a little bit of upside this this year, how he can get us mid-20s at 6.5K. But that Reds offense is not is a little dangerous. So uh, they're also willing to run, and Quintrall hasn't been the greatest at holding guys. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if the Reds had a stolen base or two and you know, manufactured a couple runs along with a home run, and then Quintrall doesn't look that good. Nick Lodolo, 8.8K versus Rockies offense that is just terrible. However, he is averaging 57% less fantasy points at home, and Colorado striking out 25%. There's definitely a little upside in this. When Lodolo gets it rolling, he has those 10, you know, double-digit K upside games. So I am a little intrigued, even though he is worse at home. The one thing I got to say with him uh, is all his big spike games have been away. Pittsburgh away, San Diego away, White Sox away. So maybe we're not able to see 30 pluses in this spot, but I think twenty mid-20s is absolutely in contention. And he can always spike at home, even though he's not doing at, uh, well at home. I am a little interested in Lodolo. It's a good spot. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit. I'm not going overboard, though. Blake Snell, this is a very interesting one. So, last week, he went 99 pitches, 4.2 innings. We know there is giant upside with Blake Snell. He is one of the only guys on this slate that can routinely go eight, 10 strikeouts. The upside is there. He has a 30% K rate over his last 20, even with him being absolutely terrible this year. His last 20 FIP is still 3.5 with a 29.4% K rate. Now, over the last five, he's been awful. 5.12 FIP, 9.58 ERA, ton of stolen bases, and his K rate has dropped a little bit. I am a little bit intrigued still. The fact that he's only 7.8K, and I think he's even cheaper on FanDuel, there is major, major upside. And at a lower ownership, I'm willing to take some shots on that upside. Hope he figured something out while he's hurt a little bit. And, you know, maybe he turns the corner. Will he? I don't know. I mean, this is a guy that uh, missed spring training because of his contract stuff, came back, Obviously needed his spring training and now, you know, we're halfway through the season and he's yet to have a decent game. He needs a decent game. I'm guarantee you this man has been working hard and trying to figure it out. So I'm a little intrigued with uh, Blake Snell, even though he's been awful. With that being said, I don't mind a little bit of Toronto stacks. Colin Ray, 7.4K. Uh, we have met 2X. My issue here is I do worry about some upside. He is averaging way more fantasy points at home, and it's a good spot versus Pittsburgh. We do have Pittsburgh striking out 25%. Issue is Ray's K rate just isn't really there. I think there's too many good pitchers to really have Ray in consideration. Now, with that being said, I don't mind a couple, you know, shares of Ray. I'm not canceling him out of my player pool, but I think there's some regression due for him. I think that uh, there's not a ton of upside, and for those reasons, I'm definitely not trying to get extra of him. Max Scherzer, 9.3K, 1.8X value. We have him at three and a half stars. I'm intrigued to go to Scherzer, especially if nobody's going there. Pitch count, he was up to 90 last time. He's looked decent. He is carrying a 4.64 FIP over his last five starts, which isn't great, but his ERA is 2.7. Uh, 
27% K rate over his last 20. I think he still has those ceiling games in him a little bit. And I'm intrigued in this matchup versus the Angels, who over the last 20 games versus righties, 222 average, 137 ISO, 292 Woba. They're just not a great offense and striking out at 22%. Sign me up for a little low on Scherzer. I think he can get there in this matchup. Brian or Brian Bello, uh, I'm a little intrigued here. He has some spike games where he's good. With that being said, I will absolutely play both sides of this spot. We have great hitting weather in Boston. It's double-digit winds blowing out to left. It's warm. This ball is going to fly a little bit in a very hitter-friendly park. Uh, Oakland striking out at 26% and have a, has a low Woba versus righties. The issue is they're likely to hit a home run or two. They hit the ball hard and... We got great hitting weather. So I am absolutely intrigued on both sides of this matchup. We have met a 23% combined K rate at 8K. I'm going to dabble a little with Brian Bellow. I am not going overboard with him, though. We only am at 13.5 point projection at 8K. Kind of hard to get there. Uh, but we know that Oakland offense can absolutely get shut down. And Bellow has some ceiling games. Really not too interested in Jake Irving. It's another spot where the Mets, uh, it's great hitting weather. However, Irving has been pitching very well lately. 3.75 FIP over his last 20 with a 22% K rate. But over his last five, the FIP got, went up a little bit, right around four, but 25% K rate. Now, the Mets have been very good versus righties, and especially lately over the last 20 games, they're hitting 280, ISO 227, Woba 364, I'm not really feeling Irvin in this spot. However, I mean, there are worse options. Michael Waka, 7,700. Uh, I'm a little intrigued by Waka personally. I Now, weather is the big time issue here. It's similar to, you know, the White Sox situation with Bailey Ober is... This game likely does postpone. If it doesn't, and some reason it ends up looking like it's going to be dry, I think Waka has some upside. He's only 7,700. He works deep into games. He has a 3.15 FIP over his last five, and it almost or has a 24.5% K rate. So with all that being said, versus the St. Louis offense, that while they've been good lately, they – aren't good on the season. I'm intrigued a little bit for some upside here. However, weather concerns likely makes that a no-go. Logan Gilbert versus my Padres. Uh, it's going to be a tough one for the Padres. Gilbert is a very good pitcher. He limits runs, 2.89 FIP over his last five, 3.6 over his last 20. He's going to the All-Star game. K rate is a little low. I don't like him because I don't think there's upside in this matchup versus the Padres. But the way this man can work deep into games and, you know, piece together strikeouts going eight innings and six Ks, something like that, is absolutely feasible versus the Padres. Uh, I would say it's not likely. Padres have been hot. But. He is at least worth consideration, and he's too good of a pitcher at this low ownership to totally dismiss. Eric Fetty has been pitching better, but weather problems there. Palante, weather problems. Not really looking at any of these other guys. I think there's just too many pitchers to consider. Now let's get over to FanDuel, check out uh, pitching ownership over here. All right, so highest owned, Chris Sale, 22%. I think that's fine. I mean, I do think he's way too high priced on this slate, but he's 14% or 14 points higher projected than Lodolo, who's only 1K more. I think that uh, it would be kind of crazy going Lodolo over Sale in this situation. Although it is in interesting that sales consensus is lower than Lodolo's. So that one doesn't quite make sense for me. I think sales, the better pitcher and not in as good of a spot, but he's just very firmly the better pitcher in this spot. 
Uh, Lodolo is fine. I think 10.5K is just expensive for him. He does have the upside in this matchup, though, to get there. I'm very interested with Scherzer. 9.3K. I think he has the upside uh, to pay off there. All you really need is sale to fail, and he has the chance to get there. Snell, 7.6K. I'm going to take some shots at, you know, around 10% ownership. I think there is some upside. With that being said, I'm going to have some Toronto stacks because he's been horrible lately. Let's, he's been letting way too many guys on base, and that just, you know, spells problems. But very intrigued to go there. Bailey Ober, I would be super intrigued. It was not weather. If this ownership stays like that, I would probably have a lot if the game is going to play. Zach Gallen, 9.7K, might be one of my highest owned pitchers on FanDuel. I, I don't mind the spot for him versus the Braves, how they've been hitting better, but I still think you could shut them down, and Gallen is an elite pitcher going at low owned. I'm intrigued. Kikuchi's low owned on FanDuel, which is a little bit interesting, 8.2K. He does have the upside to get it done, as well as Logan Gilbert. Now, Logan Gilbert... I think there's a lot of low-owned pitchers here, and we don't need to go to Gilbert in this spot. I will probably have a couple, but it will only be a couple. I am definitely not trying to push him into my lineups on FanDuel. And that'll do it. Let's get over to some stacks. All right, so our highest ceiling stack for the day We got the Mets versus Jake Irving. Now, that is a little wild because Irving's been very good, but we have nice hitting weather in uh, New York at City Field, so I don't totally hate it. I think the ceiling is good, is there, and they've been hitting the ball pretty well. Boston versus Joey Estes. This got to be one of my favorite stacks. Estes, 5.18 FIP over his last five, 4.79 over his last 20. Uh, bullpen behind him is good, but I think Boston can do enough damage that it's fine. Uh, implied total of 5.8. Nice hitting ballpark. Nice weather to hit in. All signs point to Boston being in a good spot. Uh, Minnesota versus Eric Fetty. Fetty has been pitching very, very well, so I don't love picking on him, but that Minnesota offense absolutely has upside. Let's get over to the highest projected, or sorry, highest owned stacks now. And we got Boston, as I think they should be the highest owned. After that, we got Houston versus Trevor Rogers. Trevor Rogers hasn't been great. The Miami bullpen's not great. I think it definitely makes some sense going to Houston, who's been hitting the ball pretty well. Uh, Texas hitting the ball great versus uh, Rosny Contreras. I'm fine going there. He hasn't been working deep into games. And the bullpen behind him is awful. So it makes a lot of sense to go there as well. And our highest projected stacks. We got Boston all over it. Makes a lot of sense to uh, go to Boston tonight. Cincinnati's popping up against Quintrall a little bit. Makes some sense. There is... Uh, stolen base upside he has a 4.85 FIP over the last five great American small park definitely don't mind going there and everybody else we have talked about so let's check the value stacks which we may need today there are some pretty good higher price pitchers so we might have to figure out how to get a little cheap in some spots And we got Oakland all over it versus Brian Bello. So the one thing I got to say about this is Brian Bello has got lit up a little bit, and he's been worse at home. 4.85 FIP over the last five, 4.65 over the last 20. I can tell you now that I guarantee we'll have some Oakland stacks. I will have 
the full four or five man, depending on the site. I'm going to have some mini ones. I think there is major upside in this spot for him. I don't mind Bellow as a pitcher today either because Oakland can just disappear some games. Uh, but they have the power in a good hitting environment to make some noise. So I don't mind going there. Now, lastly, let's click the teams to get a little overview of what's going on here. And uh, we'll see what we got. All right. Boston, 5.8 implied total. 1.1 lower is Cincinnati, Milwaukee, Oakland, Texas. All of those ones are obviously in consideration. 1.1 higher implied total is significant. This is the significance of a Colorado slate. So I think you got to consider that with your lineups. Now, if Boston fails, then you're getting low owned uh, guys pretty much everywhere else. So don't feel like you got to push Boston in. All it takes is them to fail. And this is baseball. <laughs> Hall of Famers fail 70% of the time, so and anything can happen in a one-game slate. S Cincinnati looks fine. Milwaukee looks fine. We didn't talk about uh, them at all, but the bullpen for Pittsburgh is awful, so you got to consider them. They also steal bases. They do a lot to earn fancy points. Oakland has that same hitting environment of Boston. If Boston goes off, there's a chance Oakland keeps up. Texas versus Contreras, Texas has been hot. Contreras is allowing a lot of hard contact and a high average exit velocity. The bullpen's bad. Houston makes some sense. Mets make sense. Minnesota, we talked about all these. Seattle. Seattle is at a 4.4 implied total. We didn't talk about them all. Uh, Missouri, frankly, hasn't been good. 5.78 FIP over his last five. 5.49 over uh, the season. He only has like six or seven starts, so... Uh, it's, or I think it's six. So not, you know, a big difference here, but it's 7.52 ERA so far in the season. Uh, and the splits for him are pretty, you know, stark. I think lefties are really kind of doing some damage on him. Seattle makes some sense. They have some power. They can definitely hit a home, couple home runs and make the game interesting. KC, St. Louis, possibly rain out. I think you have to consider the Giants also thing with Kikuchi is he has really good stuff, but when it's not working or he's not fully dialed in, he allows a lot of home runs and the bullpen behind him is bad. So K Kikuchi has, you know, big time blow up game potential. So Giants are interesting. I do have to say the big five man or four man stacks get a little hard with the Giants because they platoon so many players, but I'm willing to take some shots. Toronto, I'm willing to take a shot on. Snell, while I love him as a pitcher, I also love to stack against him because he just lets so many guys on base. Uh, Colorado, a little interesting for some leverage. And outside of that, you know, I don't really love any of these uh, other stacks here. All in all, I think it's pretty interesting slate, guys. Have a good night. Let's make some money. Good luck. Let's, let's uh, get a takedown. Peace.